Hi everyone, and welcome to our video on using SOHCAHTOA and inverse trig with a, a addition formula um, with our sine function. Okay, so in our, our previous video, so I left it here, um, we, we broke down this problem by doing SOHCAHTOA and then using a formula. That's kind of the same thing that's happening here, except instead they did use a variable in one of the parts, uh, but that's okay. And they did use inverse trig and also that's okay. So what we've got though, so I'm gonna number it again. We're gonna say, let's set this one up and this one up. I'm, I'm numbering these both one because it is it is Sokotoa is the first step in this problem also, but we need to just make a quick little tweak with that tangent inverse. So tangent inverse of seven thirds is some angle. So remember inverse trig gives us angles. So I'm just gonna use capital A for the angle and then I'm gonna rewrite it. So I have tangent of angle A is 7 thirds. And so now I can do SOHCAHTOA, I can make my right triangle with angle A and I have opposite over adjacent. And then now we can get this missing side using Pythagorean's theorem. Okay, so with Pythagorean's theorem, we've got 3 squared plus 7 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. And so we've got 9 plus 49 is the hypotenuse squared. That gives us 58 equals the hypotenuse squared. And then when we square root both sides, we would, again, for good habit, put plus minus. But we're going to choose the positive on this problem because our tangent inverse of 7 thirds is positive. So that means we should, all of these should be positive as well. Okay, so that, this, let's make one little note there. That means we are in quadrant one based on inverse trig. Because remember, if tangent inverse has a positive here in the parentheses, it's quadrant one. If it was negative, then we would have been in quadrant four. Okay, so we are in quadrant one. Let's, let's put it even here since that's a little small. Okay, so we know we're in quadrant one based on the properties of inverse trig. Okay, and then kind of like the last problem, once I have this right triangle, again, I want to just get my sine and cosine of it. So let's get sine of A, which would be 7 over square root of 58, and then cosine of A, which is 3 over square root of 58. Okay, and then I'm going to save rationalizing for the end because maybe we, we has, can simplify in the middle and I don't want to waste a step. Okay, so I'm, in case I do need to rationalize, I'm just going to save it for the last step. All right, now, step one still in the purple though, still Sokotoa, but now we've got arc sine. Remember, arc sine is the same thing as sine inverse. So arc sine of X is some angle. Okay, so we're saying that these are angles. And then from here, we can rewrite it to say, well, sine of the angle should be x. And then now we can make our right triangle again with angle b. Now, it will help us to put a 1 under that x so that we can do our opposite and hypotenuse. So we've got x and 1. And then now we can find the missing side, the adjacent, by Pythagorean's theorem. So we have x squared plus the adjacent side squared equals one squared, the hypotenuse. And then we'll subtract the x squared over. One squared is one, so we've got one minus x squared. And then like before, we'll, we'll square root. When we square root for good habit, plus minus. But again, we should, we should choose the positive because we're just assuming this x um, doesn't have any type of strange restrictions on it. And we should keep this all positive in our triangle. Okay, so there's our second triangle. And then again, we do have, so we already have sine of B. Sine of B is, and it might help to make it X over one for simplifying later. And then cosine of B, we now have square root of one minus X squared over the hypotenuse one. Okay, and that one down in the denominator is optional. Maybe we don't need to put it, but it might be good for a placeholder. Okay, now the second step, our second step is to now do the addition formula again. So, because we have a plus here, so I'm just bolding out that. 
So our second step is to do our addition formula or subtraction in case that was a minus. Okay, but on this problem, it is the addition. And what we can do is, well, we can rewrite it. So let me rewrite this whole thing first. So sine of tangent inverse of 7 thirds plus arc sine of x is the same thing. Now in the, in the rewrites over here, we're saying that sine, or that tangent inverse of 7 thirds is a. So we'll just change it to a. And then we said arc sine of x is b. So now it looks like that. So sine of a plus b. And then sine of a plus b looks more familiar to our normal addition formula. So sine addition means to do sine of a cosine of b plus sine of b cosine of a. So I know the sine addition has sine, cosine, sine, cosine, and then I just switch the angles around. Okay, and then now I've got all this information in the blue and the purple that I can use to fill in. So we're saying sine of a is 7 over the square root of 58. And then cosine of b, cosine of b is down there. That's the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1. And then we've got our plus, let me just do plus still, sine of b, x over 1, and then cosine of a, cosine of a is back in the blue, 3 over square root of 58. There we go. Okay, so it looks like we're going to still need to rationalize regardless, rationalize the denominator. But let's clean up each of these fractions. So we did the setup. Now it's just simplify. So our first numerator is 7 times the square root of 1 minus x squared over the square root of 58. And then plus uh, that we would rewrite as just 3x over square root of 58. There we are. And then let's rationalize each of those denominators now. So we would need to multiply each of these by the square root of 58. So it looks a little weird. And they actually might not even do it like this. Because if we have weird stuff going on, sometimes they don't care too much. But let's, let's go ahead and finish it off. So the first fraction now becomes 7 square root of 1 minus x squared square root of 58. We would probably rearrange the numbers a little bit over just 58. And then plus 3. Let's, let's rearrange that right now. 3 times the square root of 58 and then x over 58. And then our final step, let's, let's get a common denominator or, or combine it because we have a common denominator. I'm going to rearrange this first term just a little bit in that numerator. I'm going to change it to be 7 square root of 58 and then square root of 1 minus x squared plus 3 square root of 58 x over 58. Okay, so that's our final answer with the rationalized denominator for this problem. So it gets a little strange because of the x, but notice it's, it's again very similar to if, if you have, whoops, it's freaking out. Okay, so if you have an addition sign, sine or cosine with an addition in the middle, it, it's a formula eventually, just like how it was on this problem. Okay, so, but it needs to kind of get rewritten first or with Sokotoa a lot of the times. Okay, but that's that. Um, if you do have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching.